This is the Fnirshi HS02A USB powered soldering iron. And in this video, we will be unboxing this, testing it out, and also try to use it as a wireless soldering iron using a USB power bank like this one. And we will also try with this power tool battery using this USB adapter to see if we can get a little more power that way. Will it work? Well, let's find out. Okay, let's start the unboxing and see what's inside. So we have a little plastic case and an accessory box. Let's see what's inside the case. And here's some instructions and here's the actual soldering iron itself and then we have an adapter for DC barrel if you want to power it this way I guess you can and there's a soldering tip or cartridge here and here it seems a little stand for the soldering iron and that's all the parts in this case. Then we have this accessory box as well. Let's see what's inside it. We get a USB to USB cable. And there's a power adapter. And there are more of these cartridges in different sizes. Now let's talk a little bit about the cartridges here. So when I bought this soldering iron I did some research and I found that uh, there's many USB powered soldering irons and one thing that uh, differentiates them is the type of cartridge that they use. So there's a TS style and a JBC style. And this is the JBC style. And from the information I read, the JBC style has some advantages. It's shorter, so it's easier to work with. And the physical connector is also supposed to have a better connection. And the resistance of the cartridge is lower, which is also better. So I looked for specifically for irons that had JBC style and I found Alientech T80 and Fnirshi HS02 and both of them came in different variations one for general soldering and one for finer soldering so there's JBC C245 cartridge this is for general soldering and that's what we have here there's also another one called JBC C210 cartridge which is for finer soldering but I finally went with this one Fnirshi HS02A which takes this C245 cartridges. So next step, I guess, is to power it on and insert the cartridge. Okay, so let's get this connected to power then. So this power supply that we get is 100 watts. I guess that should be enough then. So we connect that to power and then we use the USB-C cable. and connect that to the soldering iron. And it gets very angry it seems. Somehow something is wrong. Yeah, I guess they want you to insert one of the cartridges before you power it on, which makes sense of course. So let's see how to do that then. So we'll just and screw this one. I think you can put this back on if you got a hot tip there. So and then let's see we have different tips on these cartridges. So you have this is the B K U I C2 J S and K. Let's see which one to use. Uh, let's go for this one, the B one. 
I think I will use this one to start. This sounds like a rather small but in general purpose soldering cartridge. Let's go with this one. Let's see how to do this. Probably just put it straight in. Never used this type before. My other soldering iron has a screw here where you attach it. Okay, let's see if we can get it to work this way. Is it more happy now? Yeah, seems so. It says OK. So let's press OK then. And now we get a lot of figures here. So I guess it's heating up. Oh, it's heating up really, really fast. Okay, that's good. Now let's. So it's 350 degrees. That went fairly fast, I will say. Okay, to try it a bit then, I brought out a soldering mat and experimental card, some random components, capacitor and transistor. And I guess we just try to solder them to, to the board here and see how well it goes. So let's insert this one maybe here. And then turn this on. So we need to connect the power again. And this is still connected to the power brick that came with it. And we need to hit OK. And wait until it reaches 350, which is what is set on by default. And again, it's quite fast to do that. OK, now we're done. Let's get some tin here. And let's see, let's see, let's pre tin a little bit. Okay, that's nice. Okay, I think that went pretty, pretty well. Let's try the capacitor also. Missed it. A bit hard to see for me here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, seems like that also went well. So it works for this kind of soldering. That's nice. To try something else, let's try to solder these two pieces of wire together and see how well that works. Well, seems to work as well. Mm -hmm. I think that went pretty well also. And now uh, if you want to turn it off while it's hot, you can just cut the power and then put this, this uh, cap on. And this is a good way to store it when it's hot. So now let's try to use some alternative power sources like 
the USB power bank. Um, I'll be using this USB power meter to see how much power it draws. So let's connect the power meter to the power bank. And then the soldering iron will go Okay, so at this point it's uh, drawing 12 volts, and let's turn it on, and then just, okay, it didn't like that, so it says low voltage, so I guess this, um, this power bank is not powerful enough. So since the power bank didn't work, let's see if we can Dig through the menus here and see if there's something we can change to make it work. Uh, to enter the menu, when you have this OK symbol here, you long press the OK button. And let's go to handle set. And this has a voltage setting. It says 12 volt. Well, let's try 9 volt then, maybe. Can I exit this by long pressing? Yeah. Okay. So now it's 9 volts. So let's try to connect the power bank once again. Just to see if it works at 9 volts. This time I'll just connect it without the power meter. Same problem. So it didn't help to lower the voltage. Okay. I guess we will need to try the larger uh, power, power tool battery instead. So let's do that. There it is. And this time let's use the let's connect so drawing to the power meter. And the power meter to the battery. And let's see what's happened. Happens here. And let's turn it on. And actually, yes, now it's using about 9 volts. That's interesting. And um, it's working, but it's not powering up or heating up as quickly as it did when it was connected to the power brick. But it works. Okay. So let's try to maybe set it uh, to back to 12 volts, see what happens. So for that, power it on, I guess. Then, while in this mode, long press, handle set, voltage, let's go for 12 volt, long press to get out of this, and yeah, it's actually already at 12 volt now, but then it goes back to, no, oh, actually it goes to 12 volts when heating up, okay, let's try what was the next step? Fifteen volts. Okay. Let's go for that. Yes. Okay. No. See? Still using twelve volts. And also here it says twelve volts even though I set it for 15 volts. So let's try the final setting, but I guess that won't work.
OK. And no, 12 volts is what we get from this power tool battery. But yeah, it works. That's nice. OK, so that was an unboxing and quick look at the FNIRC HS02A soldering iron. And did it work? Yes, I think it worked quite well. Um, did it work uh, to have it wireless or it's not really wireless because you still need to connect the wire to the power bank but yes it works if you have a powerful power bank it works and for my purpose I want to repair stuff without uh, some stuff that I cannot bring into the lab um, so then I don't need to bring extension cables and look for power outlet and stuff like that I can just connect this so you get this kind of package and if you carry around this, this will be enough to repair stuff without having to, to move them. And I think that's, that's quite nice.